How fast was it? Did it broke the record? In this video you'll see the fastest 3D printed gears on YouTube and how I built them. I might have watched all the videos about gear ratios on YouTube. I don't know why but gear spinning fast really fascinates me. In every video I've seen there's always something to be improved upon. There's always a bottleneck. So I decided that I would build my own gear system. This build I have two main goals. First, I want this to be the fastest 3D printed gears on YouTube. I want that record. Second goal is to answer is it possible to reach the speed of sound. Like it shouldn't be possible right? The gear should explode before getting anywhere close to that. But I want to see, is it possible? So I will use speed of sound for my calculations. The output gear should be spinning at speed of sound. I also have a couple of constraints or rules if you will. First one is kind of obvious, the gear should be 3D printed, otherwise what's the point? But there can always be other components like bearings or rods in the system. That's no problem, they can be metal but the gears themselves need to be 3D printed. Second rule is I can't use any motors, it has to be hand cranked. Third rule is specific to my case, I will try to use only things that I already have. I don't want to buy anything else if it isn't absolutely necessary. I started the project by rewatching everything I've ever seen and noted the good and bad in every system. Not just videos by the way, I also found a lot of good comments and a lot of good information in the comment section. Before I start drawing Doing anything, I have to eliminate some variables. First one being the gear ratio. What is the correct gear ratio for this? There's a lot of things to consider. In the case where the gear ratio is too high, if you manage to spin the first gear, the last gear will spin incredibly fast. But will you be able to spin the first gear without breaking anything? The force that's required to spin the first gear will be too high, and before it even starts spinning fast, something will give up, something will break. Either the gears themselves or the road or whatever. This was the problem with many videos I've seen. The gear ratio is too high, and without even spinning the first gear, Gear, like even 60 rpms something is breaking let's look at the other side of the spectrum if the gear ratio is too low the input gear has to spin at inhumane speeds for the last gear to spin at speed of sound and i don't want to be the reason why it doesn't reach speed of sound just because i can't spin it that fast but how fast can i or anybody else can hand crank what is the rpms that's possible to reach i looked this up online but i couldn't find anything satisfactory i really hope i could because back in the day everything was hand cranked even cars so i decided to measure my own speed i cranked my hand in front of the camera and counted how many frames it took for one turn and used it to calculate the RPM. The result was about 300 RPMs. But of course, this is max with no load. I'm not sure but I believe I can reach 200 RPMs under load. So I will do the rest of the calculations assuming the input gear is spinning at 200 RPMs. Our output speed is set, it's the speed of sound and our input speed is 200 RPMs. But then what should be the gear ratio to get that speed? The ratio should be output speed divided by the input speed. But we also have to factor in the size of the gears. After all, a bigger gear will reach speed of sound at lower RPMs compared to a smaller gear. So it is dependent on it. Okay, but how are we gonna find the correct size. First, it has to be large enough to fit enough teeth. Another thing to consider is gear modulus. It's the size of each teeth on the gear. As the modulus increases, the number of teeth that can fit into the same size gear decreases. Another thing I don't know is how many sets of gears I will use to get this gear ratio that I still don't know. In cases like this, you have to set some variables up, even though they might not be optimal. Otherwise, it becomes too complicated to untangle. So I will determine the variable that I think is the safest to determine. It's the diameter of the gears. If the diameter of the gear is set, then we can calculate the RPMs necessary to reach speed of sound. And with the necessary output RPMs, we can divide that by the input RPMs, which is 200, to find the gear ratio that we need. So I will assume we can fit enough gears to get the ratio with 15 centimeters. The speed we are trying to reach is speed of sound, which is 343 meters per second. We need to convert this to RPMs. To do this, first, we need to convert the seconds to minutes. By multiplying it with 60, we get 20,580 meters per minute. Next, we need to find the number of revolutions in this distance. To do this, we first need to find the circumference of the gear, which is 5 times its diameter. The diameter of the gear is 15 centimeters, which is 0.15 meters. Now we can divide the two numbers to find the number of revolutions. And we get 43,672 rotations per minute. RPMs. So this is the output speed we are trying to reach. Since we also have an estimate for our input speed, we can divide our output speed by the input speed to find the necessary gear ratio. The RPMs cancel out and we get 218. Which means for each rotation of our input gear, the output gear needs to turn 218 times. Okay, we found the most important variable. We know the gear ratio. But how are we gonna get it? Is it possible to get it with just two gears? Let's say the smaller gear has 10 teeth, but then how many teeth should the bigger gear have? To get the ratio in it, it has to have 2180 teeth. A 15 cm gear with that many teeth 
is not a gear anymore. It's a smooth disc with some creases. I am certain that we need to use multiple sets of gears to multiply the gear ratio. But how are we gonna find how many sets of gears we need? For that, again, we need to do some calculations because it's only intuitive for us to guess the ratio between two gears. Okay, this spins X amount and then this should spin Y amount and X over Y is the ratio. But with multiple sets of gears, it's not really intuitive or we can't really imagine it. So we are talking about a gear set with combined gears, but how does that work? When a gear spins another one, we get a gear ratio. But when we add another gear directly to this, the size of the gear in the center doesn't matter. It only serves to transfer the rotation. And the ratio of the system simply becomes the ratio between the size of the first gear and the last one. But then how can we multiply the ratios? To do this, we use combined gears. In this system, a bigger gear spins a smaller one. And another big gear is directly connected to the smaller gear. So they spin at the same speed. And this new big gear spins another small gear. But this time, it's not connected to the first gear. It's connected to another big gear which spins another small gear which is connected to another big gear and it also spins a smaller gear. Here, the gear sizes vary thanks to my non-existing drawing skills, but if all the big gears are the same size and all the smaller ones are the same size, all these gears can be fitted on two parallel axles. If the gear ratio between the first two gears is two, we get another two here and here and here. All these twos can be multiplied with each other to find the final gear ratio. This one spins this one twice and this one will spin this other one twice and so on and so on. The final gear ratio of the system will be 2 to the power of the number of the gear sets there are. In this case, the total gear ratio is 2 to the power of 4. Okay, we know the final gear ratio of our system. It's 218. But how many sets of gears are we gonna use to get 218? To find it, we can use this equation. x to the power of y equals to 218. x is the ratio between two gears of a set, and y is how many sets of these gears there are, which we know has to be an integer. First, let's simplify this equation by raising both sides to the power of 1 over y. The y's on the left side cancels out, and we get 218 to the power of 1 over y, which is something I can calculate on the right side. Since y is an integer, I can solve this equation simply with numerical methods. I just need to factor in some integers and see if I get a reasonable x value. After all, it's not reasonable to have 100 sets of gears. I only expect it to be 4 or 5. So let's start it with just 1. In this case, x is 218. So if the smaller gear has 10 teeth, the larger gear needs to have 2180 teeth. As I mentioned before, there is no way a 15 cm gear can have that many teeth. Let's try 2. We get 218 to the power of 1 over 2, which is square root of 218. We get 14.76, which is still too big. Let's have a look at our example gears. The ratio between these two is just 3. So the bigger one needs to be about 5 times bigger. Still too much for 15 cm. Next we'll try 3. 218 to the power of 1 over 3, which is 6.018, which is plausible, but a little less would be better. Then we can try 218 to the power of 1 over 4, which is 3.84, which we can get for sure. And we don't need to go further, since each set of gears we add means more friction we add. So finally, we will have 4 sets of gears with a ratio of 3.80 something between them. Okay, we know the ratio between a pair, it's about 4, but there are infinite amount of ways to get 4. For example, you can use 10 teeth on one gear and 40 teeth on the other to get 4, or likewise you can use 60 and 15 to get 4 again. First thing we need to consider is if the teeth number are factor of each other. When they are, if you mark the matching teeth like this, after a certain number of rotations, the marked teeth will meet again. But why is this bad? Any kind of damage or defect on a tooth will grind its way to the same teeth on the other gear and increase the wear and tear rapidly. To prevent this, we need to make sure the number of teeth we use do not have a large common factor. The easiest way to do that is to use prime numbers like 2 and 5. This way, the largest common divisor is only 1. But which prime numbers should we use? There are still many options. Here, we need to consider the small gear needs to be large enough for a bearing to sit inside. After all, number of teeth determine the size of a gear, but also the size of the teeth affect this. Two gears with same diameter can have a small amount of large teeth or big amount of smaller teeth. To reduce variables, I decided that size of each teeth will be 3 mm. This is also called the modulus. In this case, smallest gears that can fit the bearings that I have, which have 22 mm outer diameters, have 15 teeth. But we can't use 15 teeth. We can't also use 16 teeth, since they are divided by 3 and 5 and 4 and 2. Then comes 17, which is the first prime number. That will work. 
So if the smaller gear has 17 teeth, how many teeth should the bigger gear have? It needs to be about 3.8 times bigger for the correct ratio. For the bigger gear we can use 67, which is a prime number, and 67 over 17 is 3.9 something, which is close enough. Finally, we know the ratio and the number of teeth. We eliminated enough variables, now we can get drawing. I'm starting with the first gear, this one is not a combined gear and I will be spinning this one. I'm also leaving space for two rod holders, since first gear needs to spin with the rod. Next I'm drawing the other gears. These are combined gears with 17 on one side and 67 teeth on the other. For these ones, I leave space for the bearings. For the last gear, the bigger side doesn't have any teeth and it's smooth. This disc will be spinning very fast and it is really important for it to be aerodynamic. Ok, the gears are done, but what will I mount them to? I decided to use 20 by 20 aluminum extrusions. I can build a simple frame with them. The gears will be placed on 8mm hardened steel rods and rods will be connected to the frame with these pieces. The first one has two bearings that allows the first rod to spin. The other one will clamp and hold it in place. I also designed these pieces to clamp the rod and keep things from shifting. We can now start the assembly. I also made small spacers to make sure the gears are aligned. If you realize, the teeth of the gears are not straight. These type of gears are called heading bone gears or double helical gears. They are more efficient at transferring power compared to straight cut gears. Normally they are harder to manufacture, but with 3D printing they are the same. They also keep aligned with each other automatically. I mount the rods and tighten everything. Yes. Everything! Let's give it a try and... It is really hard to spin the first gear. I need something more convincing. It is hard to spin because for each revolution of the first gear, the others spin in order 3.94, 15.5, 61.2 and 241 times. I need a long crank to spin the first gear and I will fit this piece to its end. Now I believe it's convincing enough. And the last piece. Ok, the assembly is done and everything seems to be working. I just need to align the rods. Currently, this one is in the way of the crank. I will mount the frame to the table in the other room. And then we can give it a try. Ok, I aligned the rods and screwed the frame to the table with these pieces I made. I'll need to weigh the table down with something. I also built this little guy, which measures RPMs with a hole sensor. But the only magnet I have at home is this useless fridge magnet. And because of it, it can't measure reliably. Let's try it out. Okay, the crank is flipping when I go too hard. It's so loud. I don't think we reached our goal, but still, let's calculate it. One rotation of the input gear took 26 frames, and the footage is 29.97 frames per second. If that's the case, the first gear spins at 29.97 over 26 times every second. We can multiply this by 60 to convert it to RPMs. We get 69.16 RPMs. So this is the input speed. In order to find the output speed, we need to multiply this with our gear ratio, which is 67 over 17 to the power of 4. We get 16,686 RPMs. Let's convert it to linear speed. We can do that by multiplying the RPMs with the circumference, which is the diameter 0.138 times pi. When we calculate this, we get 7234 meters per minute, which is 434 kilometers per hour. I believe this is the YouTube record. Also, according to Wikipedia, we are faster than a Bugatti Veyron, but we are still behind the Chiron, quite a bit. But we are not even close to the speed of sound, we got to do better. I tightened the rod holders way harder. This time, I will not stop till something breaks. I can't feel any slipping, we are going way faster. Ok, that didn't took too long, let's wind it back a bit.
Well, yeah, I can see some teeth getting knocked out. Here is Red Broke and here are the pieces. Also, one of the bearings popped out. I wonder did that lead to the gear breaking or vice versa. Anyways, what's done is done. Let's calculate our speed. That's why we are here. When the hole in the first gear is in the top position, the time shows 7th frame of the 44th second. When it's on top position again, completing a rotation, it shows 28th frame. Which means it took 21 frames. Let's calculate it again. We first need to divide the camera's frame rate to the number of frames it took. Here I made a mistake. This 14 should be 21. Then, to convert it to minutes, we multiply it by 60. We get the RPMs of the input gear. Then we multiply that by the gear ratio. Then we can multiply that by the circumference to find the tip speed in meters per minute. Now multiplying by 60 and dividing by 1000, we get the tip speed in kilometers per hour. It says 806 here, but it should be 527 because of the mistake I mentioned before. The output gear spins at 5 537 km per hour. That's faster than any production car I know. That's bullet train fast. Not bad for some 3D printed gears, eh? I don't think I'll continue working on this, but if I did, I would improve the mounting system of the first gear and the crank to the rod. I could drill the rod and fit a pin through it. This would eliminate any slippage. Next thing I would do is definitely changing the bearings because the ones I had are absolute worst. Some of them are even kinda rusted. The next thing would be doubling up the second gear set. This way I could spin both sides with the first gear. This is definitely necessary for the first gears, since they are the ones enduring higher torque numbers. Is anybody still there? I really thought nobody would watch this, watch a video about gears for that long, but I was wrong. I published this video in Turkish in my mother tongue first and out of nowhere like I had 150 subscribers and it reached over 250k views. Which is amazing, and maybe the same thing in, will happen again in this video, but in English, I don't know. Like, I'm not so confident. I wasn't confident in I wasn't confident in the Turkish one, but then it got it. So will this one reach it? I don't know. Anyways, if you liked the video, please consider liking it and leaving a comment about what I can improve or what should I do next. And also, like. Would you watch videos this long, or would you prefer if it was shorter? Please tell me about that. Also, while you are there, really please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.